I swear today's guest is the most talented guy on Broadway, where he's currently enjoying his third Tony Award nomination for the new musical Catch Me If You Can. Please welcome Norbert Leo Butts. How you doing? Or if you prefer, Borbert Leo Nuts. Oh, uh, because... As Susan, Susan Blackwell, Blackwell had found out in her very Borbert revealing Nuts. side by side by Susan Blackwell I, episode. <laughs> I lived all through fifth grade as Borbert Nuts. No, you can just call me Norbert. Yeah. Now you were actually uh, you just came from the the the, the, the Tony brunch. The Tony, There's something called the Tony brunch, which is like a different. media event. This is like a private. You and a bunch of stars sitting in a room eating, right? This is the Tony nominee luncheon, which, frankly, I didn't know that we were ha I got, like, the call last night. Like, there's, a, there's I was like, oh, my God, another one. It's so nice, but, you know, enough. I only have two suits. I, I don't have enough clothes <laughs> for all this stuff. It was really, really lovely. It what, was is it, what is it like from an in I've never been there. What's it like from the inside? Julie White hosted the day, who's so funny. God, I love that woman. Um, this was thought up by Laura Linney, evidently. Hmm. Julie White explained to us. That you know there was just not there was nothing on on the schedule that was just for nominees that was just sort of uh, for us and um, you know no press and mm -hmm. nothing like that and it really was it was it was really fun you get awarded your your certificate or whatever oh the it's, plaque it's for the plaque and it's framed you the have food your other was really good this is your third plaque this is my third plaque yeah they're nice you know and the food was really good so who are you sitting next to. I sat next to Beth Level today, who I love, who I've worked with once or twice, you know, just workshop She's probably the most things. fun person to sit next to. She's, yeah. It was, just, it was so much fun. Beth Level is the person that I would, you know, in junior high, I've been kicked out of every single class. She <laughs> just makes me laugh. I make her laugh. Constant, you know, asides under our breath. Uh, I love Beth. So it was fun. Well, congratulations. Uh, as you know, I love Catch Me If You Can. So how's, how's it going over there at the Neil Simon? It's going really, really well. Uh, audiences love it. This is um, a genuine word of mouth show. It is. I mean, people love the show. Yeah, and, and I, I, I think that we're finding now with Broadway that you're either a word of mouth show or you're a critic's uh -huh. darling show. Um, and I, I guess there's the rare show that manages to be both and, you know, Sells out forever. Book of Mormon seems to be, you know, there's right. one of those every few years. But ours is definitely a word of mouth show. It has a tremendous amount of heart and energy and old school, old Broadway pizzazz to it. Um, but there's still a really great story happening there. And I was talking with Beth actually at this lunch today, and, and I will say this about Catch Me If You Can: it's one of the things I love most about it. Our show's really well sung. I mean, Aaron Tveit is one of the great. Um, male vocalists of, of this generation. Yeah. Um, he is a phenomenal technical singer, one of the smartest singers. Tom Wopat has hands down my sort of like favorite baritone voice out there. Mm -hmm. I could listen to him sing all day long. He's got that kind of Kurt Elling jazz, smoky sound to his yeah. voice. Carrie Butler, there's no one that belts quite in that tone that she can do. Um, and so I listen to those singers. I love that about Catch Me If You Can. And then the ensemble is just fill, filled with great singing dancers. Have you been, uh, now the album came out on iTunes the same day as uh, yeah. Lady Gaga's Born This Way. Oh, I didn't So which know one that. did you download first? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to download ours. I got it as a <laughs> gift. Um, have I downloaded any of the Lady Gaga? My daughters are really into Lady Gaga. Really? Yes. Um, I haven't downloaded it yet. Uh, but I, 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 do, I do have RCD in the car. My kids really love it. My wife really loves it. Well, it's um, a really cool Broadway CD. Yeah. Uh, you get to sing great stuff, and it's totally not Broadway. I mean, in, in a lot of ways. Yeah, it's, like, it's, um, it's authentically pop jazz. You yeah. know, it really is. Yeah. So do you like listening to your, yourself? Do you do this? I don't like listening to myself. Um, I, I, I tend to be hypercritical while I'm listening. Oh, you screwed that up, and you screwed that up. Um, but I like listening to the rest of the album. Uh -huh. I really like listening to the score of this. Um, I like listening to Aaron. I love listening to Doctor's Orders. Uh -huh. I love that song. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun, you know. My girls are in the back pretending to be slutty nurses. You know what I mean? <laughs> make, a, make a dad proud. They're 13 and 10. <laughs> and like, come on, doctor, give it to me, give it. I'm like, guys, all right. All right. <laughs> Um, do you like watching yourself? Like, did you watch your, your Letterman <laughs> appearance was great. Do I like watching myself? Did, 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 did you watch no. yourself on Letterman? Uh, I did. I, my wife T-voted or whatever, uh, DVR'd it. Um, and I, she, she said, sit down, you're going to watch this. And so I did. I watched it. And, and she, then she rewound and she watched it again. She watched it again. <laughs> She's like, watch. She says, watch what you're doing. She goes, you look like a drunken sea otter. She goes... <laughs> <laughs> look at you. You look like an otter who's had too much alcohol. 
And I, I said, that's it, I do. I sort of, with, you know, with the, the stash here. And um, I was proud of the Letterman thing because I, I was pleased with the way that it turned out because Jerry Mitchell did a really good job of using that whole space. I was shocked at how it was that cool. space got worked. Even Dave was kind of like, whoa, what's happening? <laughs> we were practically on his desk, you know, we were all over that space. And so I think it was exciting for that uh, audience to watch. Um, and great publicity for the show, obviously. Now, you had a uh, special guest, Tom Hanks, came to the show. He did. Oof. Now, I'm assuming you didn't know he was there. No, I have a very strict policy of not knowing anybody that's out in the house. Right. I can't. I don't, I don't like to do any performance where it's, like, distinguished in any way. I yeah. know that sounds weird. Like, um, I do so much better on stage if I roll out of bed, <clears throat> hit a couple of, of uh, scales, and, and hit, the, hit the stage. And I tend to be more free if I don't have that kind of self-consciousness. But he did come. He came. So, on at what Sunday. point do you find out? Right when it's over. Um, it was that curtain call. Aaron, I think, went over to me. He said, "You know who's here today?" I was like, "No." He's like, "Tom Hanks." And we, I think we were literally bowing. And of course, I'm looking at the audience. I didn't see him. Uh, he came backstage. He was as gracious and smart and funny and nice and complimentary as as I could have hoped. So, what did he say about the show? He loved it. He loved it. He just was so. Uh, thrilled with the way they found a way for it to sing and dance um, uh, while still re really remaining true to the story. He felt like it had even more um, heart and mm -hmm. sort of psychological depth um, than they were able to go into the film. He loved that Tom Wopat's character and I had a chance to, you know, we have a number where well, we kind of like the talk about the show. Yeah. It's a great duet. Um, there's no scene in the movie where he and right. Chris walk and those characters don't ever cross paths. Mm -hmm. and so. Yeah, he was just thrilled with it. It's just a role that you, you've been playing this role now. For, you did it uh, in Seattle, mm -hmm. and now you've been doing it on Broadway. Is this a role that you could sort of, do you like doing roles for, for long runs? Do you, do you get tired during a, a show's run? Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't like doing roles for long runs, um, I, only because I, I'm not great at it. Um, mm. I have a, I, I don't wanna say I bore easily. I, I, I really challenge myself to, 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 mix, to mix up what I'm doing. I don't like to repeat a performance. Um, and I just start to run out of ideas is what starts to happen to me. Um, I feel like I try things 50,000 different ways. <clears throat> and if it's a really great part like this is, right. you really can find all kinds of new stuff every night. Um, but there does come a point for me somewhere in a run, it usually happens in that first year, somewhere in that first year, mm -hmm. where the well just starts to run dry. You, uh, you retired your Fiero pants pretty quickly. Yeah, those are done, man. Those are, uh, well, you know, I barely fit into the Fiero pants, you know. <laughs> I played that role when I was 35, something like that, you know, so like, it, only in a theater like the Gershwin could I have gotten away with like being 35 and playing the young Prince Fiero, you know. So yeah, that one is definitely hung up. Do the um, do the wicked girls follow you? Do the wicked the girls? wicked girls? You know the the, the fans, the, the super fans. fans. Yeah, but you know that again, it's it's always. <laughs> I always feel so bad for them because these little girls, you know, like they saw the show when they were six, and now they're right. like ten, eleven, twelve, and I, out comes this like middle aged, <laughs> you know, like overweight, <laughs> schlubby <laughs> grandpa, and they're like. Vero. <laughs> and they come up to me afterwards with their Wicked CDs and they're like, will you, will you sign this for me? <laughs> like they don't, mommy, he's old. Uh, mommy, I don't like Vero anymore. Like they, they, they so don't. It's a little embarrassing. I look at their mothers and I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry <laughs> that I'm old and I. I uh... <laughs> so now in Catch Me If You Can, Aaron Tveit obviously plays this real smart Kid. So what, what were you, what was the, what, did you ever get away with anything when you were a kid? What were you like? You had a huge family. Yeah. So what were you like? Were you a genius at anything? What were you a genius at? I, I was pretty, pretty good at, at manipulating and lying. I, I had a few, <laughs> I had a few rough years. I, 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 was, a, I was a good kid. I, I never, but I did sort of get in trouble. I, 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 I fell in with some, I fell in with some badins for a while. You know, my family was so big. It was only so much control and, and, and disciplining my mother, my mother and father could do. We got away with a lot simply because they just didn't know where we where we were. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad. I think I was 16 before he really knew. I was convinced he knew my name. I, I, I he would. I'm, I'm exaggerating, but you know, he would get pissed and he'd be like, "Steve, M Mike, 
Tony, Tony, Jim, God, Norm, get over here. You know, he couldn't quite remember which ones. So, yeah, we were left to our devices a, a, a lot and, um, you know, just all the typical kind of stuff, um, staying out late and playing hooky. And, uh -huh. and so when, who first threw you on the stage? How did that happen? Did, were you doing it in high school? Uh, when I was a little, little kid, uh, my oldest brother's about 10 years older than me, I, um, I would see him in his shows and, and, and his high school shows, and he also had a rock band. And this was in the like, mid-70s, and they did like ACDC covers and Fleetwood Mac covers, and he was just so cool. Um, so I, just, I think I just sort of wanted to emulate him, and so um, I, 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 like uh, most kids, I started auditioning for plays in high school and stuff. And, um, but you know, it wasn't really the musicals that I gravitated towards. I, I really sort of fairly early, I saw myself as a serious actor. I wanted to be Robert Duvall or De Niro. Those were the guys that I really, and so musicals were just, that's what all that my high school offers. So, you know, you, mm -hmm. if you wanted to get on stage, you had to do, you know, Guys and Dolls and Once Upon a Mattress and right. all those things. Um, so, uh, and then in college, I did no musicals at all. Mm. Um, I just studied acting and, and through graduate school, I didn't do any musicals at all. And my first professional musical was, was Rent, was, was on Broadway. Right. So, um, e yeah, uh, school is really. So does your, does your big family come and see your shows? Uh, yeah, they all come all in waves. <laughs> it's it's uh, uh, on Where top of live? this. Where do they Are they all over? Uh, pretty much the Midwest still, uh -huh. Missouri mostly. But yeah, you know, you have, you're doing your eight shows a week and you're doing all this award shows, award season stuff. And then you, you also have family kind of coming to the airport once a week and it's a crazy <laughs> time, but it's fun. Yeah, they, they, they do. And all of my brothers and sisters have kids now. They have wow. 34 nieces and nephews. So who are now having kids, it's crazy. Yeah. When Catch Me If You Can was previewing, right before it was starting previews in Seattle, your sister actually died unexpectedly. Yeah. Um, and you were in town to do the show. Yeah. And I, I know the show ended up being delayed from this, mm -hmm. but I, I just can't, at the time, I just couldn't imagine that you were sort of picking yourself up and getting back on stage and, and doing this, yeah. this part. Just like a few weeks after. Yeah, actually just five days after. Wow. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's a, it, was a strange, it was a strange time. It, it, and I, and uh, part of Part of me thinks I'm still processing it, and I know that'll be two years on July 19th. And I'm still processing it. You know, there was definitely some some post stress yeah. <laughs> that I, I, I that that I went through. But you know, um, I just you know the show. You know, people say, "Oh, you did this great thing. You went back to the show." I I needed that show more than the show needed me, big time. Um, I you know, my world really didn't make sense. It really right. sort of was kind of shattered uh, for my whole family. And um, so the show became, um, God, it just became a refuge for me. You know, I could put some concentration. It, 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 my day had a sense to it. It had a, mm. uh, a ritual to it. And I needed something like that to ground me because I was just uh, having a really, really hard time. So yeah, the show really saved me and this group of, of, of actors really, really, really had my back and, and I love them so much, you know, dearly, dearly, deeply, because they, they just propped me up and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, days I just could, didn't think I was gonna, I couldn't just, I, I cannot do that, I cannot get on stage, you know, I can't stop weeping or I can't, I can't get it together. <clears throat> they literally, literally held me up, you know, off, yeah. off stage. And, Wow, and uh, so we're a really close group because of that, uh, that um, event. Yeah, how do you think uh, going through all that has changed you? Yeah, you know, death uh, changes everyone um, who 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 goes through it or or, or loses someone. Um, um, it, it really has changed me. It's it's changed me as 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 a, as a person, as a, as a husband, a father. As all my relationships have changed, um, it's changed me as an as an actor, mm -hmm. really profoundly. I think so I'm I'm really honored with this nomination for Catch Me If You Can. Um, I, I I think I had started to become kind of, you know, I've I've been doing this a while, and mm -hmm. I and I, I I've, I've I've been blessed to work as much as I've worked. You know, this is my eighth Broadway show. 
done a lot of off-Broadway. I've done, mm -hmm. just worked. You know, I have children. I have to work. Um, I think I was getting sort of, not blasé, but maybe a little glib about work, mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, uh, this role, or what am I going to do with this? You know, you just kind of sit back on it a little bit, and losing, losing my, my sister in the way that I did, I don't know. I, I, life becomes um, much more precious, and, and, and work becomes, I, I sort of recommitted my, myself um, to this project, and to this whole idea of, of being an actor. What, do, what are we doing exactly, you know? Mm. Or is it just bottom line money? We're just trying to beat that next show for the Tony Awards so we can get butts and seats and right. you can put on nice clothes and have people rave about you. You know, what, what, what is it exactly we're trying to do? So I've just been asking myself those kind of questions in the, in the past couple of years and I think it's made me a better actor, you know? I try not to go on stage ambivalently, you know? I try to really um, make it mean something. And you won, you are now a two-time Astero Award winner. I'm a two-time Astero Award winner. You are like one of the most famous Broadway dancers <laughs> That's in the history of Broadway dancers. But you know, the irony about that is I love dance. I love it. I love it as an art form. If I could be anything in this industry, I would be a dancer. Wow. But growing up as a teenager and through college, I was, I, I, I wanted to be a serious actor. Dance was something that the musical theater guys did. I don't want, I don't want to be. And my uh -huh. father would say to me, my dad was a dancer as a kid. He would say, you should have your ass in dance class. You should take yourself and get some technique because you huh. can move and you should go dance and get over your you know, male ego or your vanity and go put some tights on and get some technique. And I never <laughs> did. And I so regret that now. So I feel like I've been given this kind of second. Right chance to kind of be a dancer, you know. Um, are, you a, are you a big dancer in your normal life? Do you like throw yourself in the middle of a wedding? Are you I love guy it, yeah. Fool of himself I was that guy in high school where uh -huh. I jumped into the circle and people got around <laughs> me. And I, Any break dance I did, ever? I, I did, I, I did a I little. carry the cardboard around? I did like. a little street dance. Um, <laughs> I've always just moved instinctually. Um, but I worked really, really hard uh, with Jerry on that number. And yeah. so to get the Astero Award, I mean, to get it for Scoundrels was a little bit like, really? You're going to give me an Astero Award for doing great big stuff? <laughs> that was really just kind of like gestural movement. But on this one, you know, it was really choreographed. And, and um, I've added some of my own things to it, but I've worked really, really hard to do it. So I'm super honored well, you, and proud of that. And you're doing a lot of really sort of fun, goofy movies. Did that come out in improv? Like, did you guys get in yeah, the studio when you like... Exactly. I joined the... Jerry was in pre-production. Uh-huh. He usually has his sort of core dancers that he right. and he works out right. movements, right. and he invited me to join them for like two weeks before we started rehearsals. And I just go to a corner. He just plays the music. I watch the basic choreography. He'll come over, tell me a couple things, and then he'll leave. And then I just get to move, and I love that time. I did this sort of the same thing thing in Scoundrels, huh. where I just get a mirror and I get the, the music, and I get all these gorgeous dancers to music kind of and inspire the me. <laughs> And the chance to dance. That's so gorgeous. Are you in your leg warmers? What, what's, what's the outfit? What's the outfit like? <laughs> I'm usually in like you know, baggy sweats and the music in the mirror. Oh god, that's I want funny. some some bootleg video of that <laughs> <laughs> of you in the corner, figuring out your moves. <laughs> so you have a Tony at home for I do. Scoundrels. Are you are you looking for a, a mate for that Tony? Do you want to have a twosome? A bookend. Bookends. Um, it would be lovely. Um, and I would be absolutely fine watching one of those other guys get it. Um, I, it's a good group of guys. Have you seen their work? None of them. Yeah, because you're too busy. None of them. Um, that's probably best because <laughs> if I saw one of them, I think, he's amazing. What the hell am I doing in this company for? Uh, and I hear that they all are. So, um, Well, you're definitely there yeah. for good reason. So it's a brilliant performance. Thank and, you. Uh, I, I look forward to seeing you on the Tony Awards. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for coming, Norbert. My pleasure. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.